Welcome back. So I'm, I was extremely confused why the get customer didn't work last time, or sorry, the post customer, but how do you fix stuff like that? Well, we need to do a bit of debugging and I wanna show you guys this right now, how you can do debugging. So we are going to go back to the post request right here. I still have my breakpoint like I showed you before and I'm going to add the body again like before. I'm going to try and send this now to see what actually happens step by step when I send this to my backend. Now it's very powerful to debug because you can very quickly decide where the issue actually resides. Step one, let's see if it's our REST API. Do the customer actually, the client, does Postman actually send the right information for me? If I'm also my customer, I'll notice right here that the information did get to the REST API and I did map it right. So I have first name Dylan, last name Oinky and address Oinky Street. So I know now that it's not Postman sending the wrong data. That's the first question. Is it actually my client, or in this case Postman, who sends me the wrong data? That's not the case. So it must be me doing something wrong if a customer is not created as he should. What I can do next is I can see I'm using this customer inside my service with the create customer. So let's try and step into that guy by pressing the step into button in your developer tool. So I'm inside the create customer in the service now and it seems I'm just passing the customer onwards. I'm not even doing any tests or changing anything. So it couldn't be in here I'm making mistakes either. So let's just try and go to the next area where we're trying in the repository to create the customer. Maybe that's where I'm messing up. So let's jump in here, stepping into again. So inside the repository, which is where I save my data to some database, some data storage. Right now it's just a list. What I'm doing is step one, I'm creating an ID. Is that what messes everything up? Let's try and step into this guy and step over the first guy right here. I step over to kind of jump a line. So let's just have a look. It seems I'm getting ID of tree. That sounds perfectly fine because I know the other ones had ID one and two. So it sounds right. And then I just look at the customer again, see if I messed something up here. Nope. Now he has the right ID and he has the right information. Okay. And next what I do is I add the customer to my fake database. And let's just try and step into that just to kind of see. Now if I do that, I'm going to actually jump into some code that's built by the actual .NET framework. So let's just try and do it anyway, step into. And it actually gets some external source information and this is how you actually add stuff inside a generic list inside the .NET framework. Brr, scary stuff, scary stuff. I wanna go back. So I wanna try and step out. Now I might as well just tell you guys that this sometimes messes things up and you can't just step out, but it worked this time. So I'm back in my code and I just have to trust that the .NET framework works that when I have a list of customers like I do right here, it actually knows how to add the customer. So let's just try and step over again, step over. What I can test is that when I'm done adding my customer, it should have three customers now in my list. And it does, it does have three customers. Hmm, so let's just step over again. It seems it's returning the actual customer I just created. And let's just try and continue because I didn't see any errors in any of that code. So if there's something wrong, it must be in the read when I'm getting the customers back, or maybe this is overwritten somehow, but it's a static list, so that shouldn't be a problem either. So I'm confused right now. So let's just try and do the get request again, because maybe I just made a mistake before in the videos, and I, I don't know what I could have done wrong, but maybe I just made a mistake. So I just did the get request. We have one, two, and we actually have three customers. So there's nothing wrong. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why it failed before. It should have worked. There's no, I've not changed any code. I've not done anything different. So just to kind of make sure that actually things do run, I'm just going to do another post right here. I'm going to add in another user right here, um, up here, and let's just call him uh, Lars. Uh, there we go. McFries. Oldie Street. I don't know why it needs to be street, but it's just good. And 101, and let's just try and send this to kind of post another customer. Hit my breakpoint. Let's just continue for now because it seems it's working. So I don't want to stay in there. And let's just do a get request again. Notice how fast it is to now start testing my data and start actually adding. Now it should be another guy down here and here he is last with the right ID. So everything's running. But what, I, what this gave me an opportunity to do was show you guys debugging. And you can really dive to, through your code that's one power, but another very, very powerful thing is that with the clean architecture we used, with the tree-layered the, the, the tree architecture, whatever you're using, you can now figure out where is the error actually happening, right? 
Is it in the REST API? Did they pass in the right customer? If that's the error, they didn't pass in the right customer, maybe we should start kind of informing them you cannot pass in a wrong customer, we'll do that later. Is it, if that's not the case, maybe it's inside the service, so we'll jump down there. Maybe it's inside the repository, so we'll jump down there. Maybe it's in the database, but I can very quickly identify the issue by doing breakpoints and stepping through my code. Start using that. That's not something I encourage you to do, that's something I demand you to do. Start using breakpoints. See you next time, have fun.